Asara everyone, Toodles20 here and welcome to another episode of Asara. I am joined by my good friend and collaborator Skibbeth. Skibbeth, how are you going? Hafara, Toodles, Hafara everyone. Uh, I'm doing very well and uh, I'm uh, having some little fun with this new introduction that we are going to say every single time from now on with Hafara, which Hafara as uh, everyone I think almost imagine it's the hello in Osakrian language. Uh, it's because everyone voted uh, this word in the last um, video, the one with the military base. So thank you all for participating and for taking part of this crazy and funny moment for us. Um, so yeah, all good here and um, looking forward to see this um, build that you did here i'm in premiere as everyone else because everyone i didn't see i didn't had time to load the game and to see what uh, two dollars did there so i'm watching with all of you in premiere so it will be fun and nice oh man i'm i'm just i'm just still i'm so impressed by the way you said how father like i'm i'm just i've been practicing in my sleep i'm just uh, <laughs> Just an Australian trying to wrap his brain around another language. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be, it, it can be, I mean, I don't know it how to say it exactly, but it can be Hafara or Hafara. I don't know. Depends on accent hafara. Yeah, or something like this. God knows. I mean, uh, someone from Middle East or from uh, uh, North Africa or something can tell us exactly how it should sound better. But it, I think they can't Oof. say it because they will just write it and we don't know. Anyways. It's, I'm just imagining, fun. I'm imagining half our audience just their head in their hands and just going like, oh, whoa. hitting unsubscribe <laughs> as a butcher yeah. language. Yeah. But you know what? It's, it is um, the official hello in Osawa and um, we are the dictators of this fine country and we're allowed to say it however we see fit, which is um, just one of the benefits of owning your own country, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Well, in Osakra, Osarian, Osakra, Osakrian language, I don't know exactly how to say it, but it should be just fine. I mean, why not? Mm. Yeah, that's right. Um, right now, um, well, actually, I might just talk about what I'm going to be doing this whole episode. Uh, this episode, I'm actually working on an area that I was working on in the um, in the second episode of this series. It's pretty close to that dock that I built, and the reason why I've chosen this area is because I wanted to start moving some residents into Osara pretty quick now that Bearded Monkeys made us some really fine residential houses. Um, just, yeah, just had to move some people in. It just seemed about right. We have our borders, we have our military base, we have some industry. It's, it's about time we started getting in some residents. So towards the end of the time lapse, um, well, actually, towards the end of the episode, I'll be working on moving in some residents in a bit of a live play, which is um, really, really fun. Looking forward to it. And I'll also be um, just giving a little bit of a tour of the map and giving a bit of an idea of where everything sits within our fine country. But just before I get into that, I'm going to be working on something that... I didn't really plan to build, but when I when I start searching for inspiration to build in Osara, um, I do mostly look around the region of the Suez Canal in um, in Egypt, and in that area they've got this really cool ferry that transports uh, vehicles from one side of the canal to the other, and. Um, I thought we really needed to put one down. So I had a crack at building one and you can see me um, just working out where it's going to sit just there. And uh, I can tell you, this is not the first time I plopped it down. It, it was um, a bit of a mission to actually work out how it's going to fit down there and, um, you know, how that little alcove sits because these sort of, these ferries seem to have this little nook where the, ferries kind of come in and to the bay and pick up all the cars and so I really wanted to get that perfect and looking awesome and uh, did a all right job um, I, I might say so myself and um, 
yeah, I guess Skib will have to um will be the judge of that, but he'll just be kind as he usually he usually is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm I'm very bad guy. I'm, I will be. I'm watching you. I'm seeing every step you do there, and I'm, I will be critic. Yeah, as critic. well as as um as dictator of this country, as fellow exactly. dictator of the country. Yeah, definitely. Fire my ass if you um if you disapprove or I don't know, do whatever you like. But <laughs> I will send my military guys there. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, they they are half my military guys too. So um, do your worst. Do you and have actually where? Where Pardon, do you have your that? own military? Yeah. Yeah. Where <laughs> well, they, where are, are they on camels? Where's that? <laughs> <laughs> if um, if people are probably wondering, I did mention that we will be moving the first residents of this fine country, but um, you probably can see down there there are eighty-two residents already. Um, Skip and I were laughing about this before because those eighty-two residents actually just live within. Skibbeth's military base that he built in the last episode. They, um, I think you you used some some houses for the barracks, and I'm pretty yeah. sure some army guys moved in. And I've seen some old ladies around there too, and some some dogs chasing bikes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, at, for the moment they are in training session. Uh, people are uh, enrolling in army. <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. Uh, that's that's only that's why there are only almost 100 people, military people there. But uh, people are enrolling. They are coming from the neighbor countries to enroll here in this beautiful uh, army. And uh, as I said, um, they belong to one of the dictators. That is me. And um, if you want, you can ask a beer monkey to make some. Uh, guys on camels for your army if you want so oh so you think i'm in charge of the camels well to be honest everybody <laughs> we um yeah we were talking about camels because um we are also going to be releasing the bearded monkey camel assets to the workshop and by we i mean bearded monkey he's um he's built so much so many assets for this collaboration this this series and um, one of those is a really fine bunch of camels so that'll be hitting your workshop um, as this episode does so um, definitely go and check that out the link will be in the description below and yeah I think we'll have to um, we'll have to plop some down in the live play maybe even line some of the camels up to jump on the ferry being probably the yeah. official transportation of this country i don't know is that something you'd be interested in well it should be um something like that i mean um, uh, people will kind of use camels too bad that we cannot uh, create a camel as a vehicle here it would have been cool mm. but uh, if uh, the monkey will do that uh, the bad part is that <laughs> the, the the legs of the camels will rotate at the wheels <laughs> I've seen that someone did a uh, carriage uh, with a horse, of course, and as a vehicle, and uh, the horse's legs uh, were rotating <laughs> like wheels. Wow. So it's it's bad. We, we can't do that. I mean, it's come so on. bad. But, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, it would have been something very cool to have um, to have done here. I don't know someone riding the camels, and I just so. So you know, scrolling down there, uh, we have also some llamas. So why not llamas yeah. and camels? Yeah, that's right. People, uh, people uh, sleep with the camels in the house. Uh, I guess, right? I mean, um, for example, there are some. I will not mention the name, but there are some kind of people that sleep with their horses in the house. And I'm not kidding when I say that. But uh, yeah, maybe people here can sleep with uh, camels in the house because they are not sacred or something. But uh, you know, they live just because camels are alive and they bring I don't know something to them. Like uh, there are farmers that have well, I don't know a cow or a sheep or something, and that's the only way to survive to to have something to eat. Well, from camels, I don't know to make a, a work or something. Plus, am I saying right if I say in the Middle East, in the past, but I think also in the present, if you have many camels, it means you are very rich. 
Um, maybe, maybe. I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I um, think so. I think so. I'm not sure, but I think so. Yeah, someone said, uh, uh, by the way, someone said uh, something about the military base that we have too many tanks. I mean, it's, uh, they said it's not that realistic because um, not even England or something. I don't know exactly. I, I forgot. Uh, the. I think England doesn't have so many tanks, which I really doubt. But uh, man, Osakra is the real deal. I mean, in Osakra, uh, the army is the main thing because, uh, you know, when it's a dictatorship, um, dictatorship or how is it said yeah uh, military the army is the main uh, weapon for uh, the dictator so and uh, about that <clears throat> let's um, decide and let, let's talk about this thing with dictators uh, and so on we are we are saying it in a funny way I mean uh, let's not take it ad literam I mean come on uh, it's a game it's a, our imagination and we wanted to do something different a little bit different than usual with this game and uh, this kind of uh, playing so we just imagine Osaka is a country Osaka is ruled by dictators and it's a poor country a dangerous country and so on but again it's a game and uh, that's all let's not yeah go into that's right the, uh, and that's why I mean and that's why we make up a country because um, we did we, when we first started this series we didn't really want to copy any sort of country or any sort of style. We wanted to make up our own style and we're definitely drawing from inspiration from places and um, but yeah I mean the whole thing's really it's really just a fictional place so um, yeah if some if uh, there is something. Um uh, impossible. Well, in Osaka, everything is possible. <laughs> yeah, everything. the land of the land of opportunities. Exactly. <laughs> right here, I'm actually just channeling some some of Skibbeth's, uh, I guess, road painting skills. I um, road painting is not some of my uh, finer. I don't know. Probably not my finer qualities. I guess. I. Um, I'm more of a detail in other areas, whereas Skib is definitely a, um, a definitely a road painter and a, a road fine tuner. What I'm also trying to do is there's a lot of ugliness that I'm trying to cover up in this um, in this area. Um, I mean, there are some good ugliness and there's also some bad ugliness, and I'm trying to cover up the bad ugliness with the um, just bits like props and houses and stuff uh, there's a lot of problems when I'm um, when you start terraforming a land like this so yeah just trying to cover up a lot of those bits and pieces with buildings and props and um, yeah it can be a bit tricky sometimes but like I think I think I manage it somewhat satisfactory I guess um, and I'm also working on a bit of an industrial area just to surround the um the the ferry dock and I, I feel like there would be a bit of a cargo area around here i mean the the ferries are mostly transporting vehicles and people but a, a little there would be a little bit of trade between um supplies and other bits and pieces on the other side of the banks here um, I guess Skip and I haven't really spoken about what could be over there. I mean, that's not where another country is. That's actually still, still a Sarian land, and we'll probably go into that a bit more detail in the live play. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't really detail that area too much. I kind of left it for future progress, um, future pro uh, projects, I guess, um, which I'm pretty. Yeah, like I mean, every I don't know about you, Skip, but every time I start building in this area I just kind of go like oh what about building over here and what about building over there and it just can't it can't help but want to build in other places uh, it's and then I know that I have to hand over the save game to you and I just there's still so much more I want to build on it it's um yeah I know it's hard to decide where to build and what to build and how and so on it's very very hard but uh, as you said yeah everything at its time I mean the other side of the river will eventually be um, full of uh, life and full of stuff. Maybe uh, the continue. I mean, maybe the city can be on both sides of the river. 
um, we have time to decide this and um, again everything at, at the time we just started to do the city well you started and did uh, this uh, and maybe the entire maybe most of the city will be your your part or your side to do uh, we shall see by that uh, but um, this beautiful um, very boat area yeah very uh, it looks pretty cool and it's beautiful as I said yeah I'm, I'm repeating myself but it's <laughs> for a reason because it's beautiful <laughs> it really Speechless. does uh, you really really um, nailed it I love how those cars waiting there uh, like they will have to go on the ferry and you, you plop that nice gate uh, it, it's beautiful I mean uh, couldn't imagine this I never thought of it so, touche, man, touche. Thanks, man. Thanks. I um, If people are wondering about the different uh, assets and um, bits and pieces that I've used for this um, this area in particular, uh, the, the ferry, the dock itself is a vanilla building and I've just I've plopped it down in a particular way that, um, you know, just allowed it to kind of change how it, it just changed a little bit the way it looked. And um, it was definitely no piece of cake sticking that down. And a lot of the, well, all the docks, they were actually made by uh, Strict Toaster. And uh, they're just the prop version, so nothing's going to start docking there. But, I mean, it's a super nice prop to be plopping down there. And it just worked really well. And um, I think I might continue that, that along the, pretty much around this whole little area. Because I think... This area might end up being a bit of a industrial area, um, you know, serving, as I said, this is kind of the outskirts of the city. It would kind of be acting as a bit of a, um, like an industrial park. Um, I've just also changed some of the trees. I'm getting rid of a couple there. I'm plopping down a couple of nicer trees here. Um, and you'll see my do kind of plop down quite a lot of trees um we skip and i do talk about it being desert and not being much vegetation and such like that but around the waterfronts and even in the city there are like pockets of just a lot of greenery a lot of um, a lot of trees a lot of vegetation and um yeah i mean i guess around any sort of water water watery area <laughs> watery area um there is like a bit of a bit of vegetation so um just trying to keep that in mind and uh i'm over here i'm trying to kind of map out a bit of a park uh, i didn't really want this park to be too particularly flash um probably just was once a really nice looking park when they first built this ferry and now it's kind of just been left to i don't know just left to mother nature which is um you know, Mother Nature hasn't really looked after it very much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Skip, what else are you thinking about this area? Uh, about the area, well, uh, I want to say, as you said, uh, it's normal to have more trees and more stuff, uh, more green stuff here on this side of the river. Because first of all, it's on the river side. And second of all, because uh, uh, it will be a city and we have to, I mean, you know, in the city areas, they kind of uh, plop trees in real life as well. They grow trees and grass and stuff, especially if they can, if they can um, water them uh, with the help of the river and so on. So it will be normal. I think this is, will be the only area where we have more greenness. But also in the if we make some oases, also we have some green stuff there. But that's all. So. I think the mm, tree limit will not be a problem, an issue for us on the Osara, but uh, there will be an issue with the prop limit, I think. Uh, and uh, regarding this, I think, when do you think that we will hit uh, the prop limit if we keep it like this? I mean, lots of uh, detailing, <laughs> lots of props plop there one by one. Either it's a decal, either it's a line, either it's a a little prop or something uh, we will reach the limit pretty soon uh, when do you believe and everyone else also leave in the comments this because it would be nice to see from you when do you think we will hit the prop limit ah i i really um i dread that day but um i really i think probably about the 25 
25th episode, I'd, I'd imagine. Um, uh, well, you are very positive or very, let's say, um, uh, you are hoping that, I mean, I think it will, we will hit it before 20. I really, I really hope, I hope so. I hope not. I, I really hope, hope not. not. I Sorry. Hope, well, I hope not me and also not you will be right. I mean, hopefully it will never be reached, but uh, I doubt. I doubt, especially now that we started uh, to build a city. Well, imagine the detailing that, uh, that would be done here and stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, it will be nasty. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the situation. I mean, we cannot. Uh, uh, let's say make economy on plopping stuff because no way Hosakra it is a poor country but has lots of things beside garbage of course <laughs> yeah 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 for sure now nah, we'll um we'll figure him out we'll um we'll definitely sort that out um but um, I'm at the moment I'm I'm just plopping down the buildings for the um for the suburb that I'm going to start moving some people into and this is a building made by Bearded Monkey. Uh, Skib used this in episode three when he made um, a little abandoned, forgotten town. I guess it's not abandoned, it's a forgotten, forgotten little village. And man, it's such a nice asset. But I just changed it up a little bit by layering the buildings on top of each other to uh, kind of create a bit of a different look for the building. So I wanted it to be, to kind of look like as you know, families have grown in these houses. Um, they've just added more and more layers on top of each other. And it's now just kind of created this haphazard sort of village. And it's kind of just built one one block of them. And then I just copied and pasted them because uh, that's, that's something that I do in like so many of my builds, just copy and paste buildings because it's so much easier. And it's like, we just do a bit of rotating and, um, you know, changing every building like just slightly, and you, know, you can barely tell that it's a copy and paste job, which is um, which is pretty cool. Um, but man, I mean, yeah. it's made such pretty buildings. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm super impressed by them. And um, Skib, we're pretty much at that point where we can start moving some people in in a bit of a live play and showing everybody a bit more of. Osara from a live play, which is um, pretty exciting. So, um, yeah, I mean, coming up next, we're going to get into a live play. So stay tuned. Hey, guys, and welcome to the live portion of this episode. Um, I guess it's probably the first time every anybody's actually seen um, the map from afar, which is, um, yeah, pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, this is our map. I made, I made this map and... Look, I mean, we we made it so that it wasn't finished. I mean, it's, it's not a finished map. And we did that intentionally because, um, you know, we're going to be making, we're going to be building on this map. And we kind of felt like there's no point putting in, you know, trees and um, mountains that we're just eventually going to demolish. But to be honest, it's, it is pretty much, it's pretty much done. I feel, I reckon it's about 80% done, but... I think the majority of our terraforming and um, other bits and pieces we're going to be doing during the series. Um, anything you want to say about that, Skib? Uh, no, no, you said it uh, pretty, pretty well. Uh, indeed, it would have been too bad to create the entire map and then just delete stuff or recreating stuff and so on. Imagine you doing all those sand dunes and stuff and then mm. we come and flood the terrain. <laughs> It would have yes, been bad. Yes, so yes, yes. You just have uh, you done you did that uh, part there, and from now on the map will be created uh, day by day. Um, <laughs> maybe we'll eventually uh, release the map as well on the Steam. Not, not maybe for sure. At the point we will uh, release the map as well, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty, yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah, so like a lot of the stuff we have on this map is just here for, you know, just as the foundations, um, you know, we've got like bits that are broken and, you know, um, intersections that are going to change. It's, it's like totally, totally subject to change some areas. Um, but we'll just give you a quick little tour. Um, over here we have episode one where Skib made the very nice, um, I guess you could call it nice, 
<laughs> border crossing. <laughs> it's um, yeah. I mean, one half's nice, and one half I don't think I'd really want to be crossing anytime soon. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, next door we have the giant pyramids that take up just huge amounts of room, and man, like, really not joking about how big they are. They're giant. Yeah. Very big. Next door we have Skib's little little village that is made a little lost town um man looks so cool with the pyramids in the background hey exactly exactly um, those guys that will go up in the, in that mosque they have a nice view yeah that's right yeah you're just gonna climb that tower then over here we have the army base the military base that um skip oh, yeah, built in the last episode yeah yeah that's right Pretty sure there's a couple of um, yeah, there's a couple of uh, cars. couple of people. yeah. <laughs> uh, after I load the game, when I did the cinematics, I banned all the cars. Uh, getting in in this uh, military base is in it's much better. By the way, do you imagine we were four episodes ahead and now we have, uh oh, nothing ahead recorded. Oh my god, I don't know. We we really just need to get a wriggle on and get get episodes pumping I don't know we're, we're taking our time here's the dock that I built uh, this um little industrial area it's not even little it's giant I mean a lot of the stuff on this map are just giant even the build that I did today is pretty giant um and here's the village that I've just started over in this corner over here so we're actually going to start um this live play off by encouraging some people to move in and they're not going to move in at this current state unfortunately um, they're all going to complain that there's no there's no services for them and there's no anything. So, um, I don't know. I think it looks like a pretty nice place to live. Uh, pretty nice place to live. I don't know. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well... Uh, it would be a very nice. Something that I've seen Strict Toaster talk about in his episodes where um, he's been encouraging services encouraging people to move into um into Sinu is he's been plopping down a couple of services on a neighboring island and i'm just going to plop down a couple of services here just so that um people do actually move in because i do want to start getting getting in some residents so a lot of these things are actually going to demolish um as soon as uh, we really start getting the city on a roll getting more villages in and more services in um, actually properly properly down well everything will be done eventually i mean yeah everyone should know that these are just the first stones that we are adding into our little big city so in the next episode not in the next one but in the future episodes the city will grow more and more will take a nice shape and uh, everything will be just fine I thought you said um, we'll take a nice shave. Shave. <laughs> Not shave. We have a burger already. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> imagine typical. imagine those ones that we have to move inside there. Coming home and said, what the fuck? I just bought a house. We have a burger inside already. <laughs> <laughs> oh, two one. Oh, look at the crap. Yeah, this is this is classic. I mean, yeah, Osaka this classic. is exactly what we needed. <laughs> oh, boy. See, I don't know about you, but I, I, I kind of think that I'd rather, yeah, see, we're going to get a lot of cars that are going to want to park on these roads, which um, I think is going to be annoying. I'm pretty sure I can well, use traffic uh, presidents. Uh, yeah, but to... um, if you ban them, uh, I don't think you should, I mean, it's up to you, but I don't think you should ban them. Uh, after all, it's normally, I don't think you should also make too many car parkings or something. It's just fine. Yeah. It's, I mean, they don't have all the stuff necessary. Too bad that the cars, some of the cars are not, let's say, fitting the theme. So, <laughs> but it, it, we can't have everything. I mean, it's hard. It would have been cool to have some Osakrian people, you know, dressed up like uh, as it should be. But it's kind of hard. And I think we have many uh, more burglars than people living here. We do, yeah. I mean, maybe these people are burglars. 
Um, I will just pop down another police. another police station just for the sake of it. I, I think you um, should copy the military base and put it closer. <laughs> <laughs> put it next to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, humor me. I'm just going to ban. I'm just going to ban it on a couple of a couple of roads. You are the boss here. See, I'm wondering if we ban it all on these roads, plop down our own props, and then they can all park on this road, and that way it's kind of a bit more... You know, like, maybe the people that live in this sort of village don't really have cars, only a couple of them do, or something like that. This is what a dictator does. See, guys? Do you, every, everyone, <laughs> can you see what this dictator is doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thank God there is a, uh, yeah. a good dictator also, which is me. I will load the game and I will leave people park everywhere. Inside the house, on the house, under the house. So, for anybody that may have missed that conversation, uh, we are going to be releasing, and by we I mean um, our, good, our good man, fellow collaborator, uh, Bearded Monkey, is going to be releasing... His beard, his beard, he's going to be releasing his camel prop um, to the workshop. And um, that's going to be up as soon as this episode is up. So um, if, you, your, if your city is lacking some camels, you can go and check out the Steam Workshop and um, grab yourself some camels for your city. Yeah. What do you reckon, Skip? Does that, does that suit? Yeah, it pleases me. Uh, well, you know what, Skip? I think that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, now that we've shown people the general gist of our ideas and the map and um, how this series is probably going to pan out in future episodes, um, I think it's pretty much time to call it a wrap. Do you have anything else you'd like to say before we um, say our farewells? Uh, no. Um, I mean... The usual stuff that I think you will cover it up. Uh, don't forget to leave comments, guys. Hit us with comments, ideas, new stories about Osara, Osakra. I'm starting to say Osara as the two dollars. Uh, mm. Hit us with comments, uh, leave likes, uh, subscribe uh, if you haven't already. If you are new to these channels, uh, just subscribe and because more stuff will come. Beautiful stuff, uh, Osakra stuff. So. Uh, dictators stuff, dictatorship stuff, you know, stuff like this. So stay close. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, you should stay close. Next episode will be up on Skibbeth's channel. Skip, what are we going to be saying from you next episode? Uh, I think, uh, not a thing. I will do a garbage dump, a little garbage dump area. I mean, it will be looking pretty nasty and cool, but uh, we need to collect all this garbage. Um, it will not be a recycling center, so do not uh, make a confusion, guys. It will be a big garbage dump with some garbage, let's say, man, uh, uh, an area where the garbage cars will be parked and so on. But you'll see, something like this. The main idea, garbage dump. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Sure. Bye-bye, guys.